Oh, the pole star too. So pretty, but so problematic. If you have a blinking SOS light, you may not have connectivity either. And your instrument panel probably looks something like this. Now my car does have GPS. I can see where I am on the map, and if I use my phone's hotspot, I can even navigate places. But everything I've tried has failed to get my LTE connectivity back for the last 24 hours. Um, my Wi-Fi does work. I've tried toggling SIM data off, restarting the car by holding this button for 20 seconds until the screen goes completely black, all the above. Um, nothing's worked yet. So we're gonna try to go nuclear and reset the uh, telecommunications module. Things you can troubleshoot with. Um, try, if you're on a later software update, try pressing and holding your defroster for about 20 seconds until you see this SOS light change. And that is supposed to reset the telecommunications module, hopefully get you back online. You can also try pressing and holding the play button, powering off the vehicle, and getting out, shutting the doors, locking the car for a while before you come back. And none of these things have worked for me. So my next step, since my nearest pole star space is five hours away, it's going to be to completely power off the telecommunications module, which involves taking the 12 volt battery and disconnecting it, and also disconnecting the backup battery, which is located in the driver's side C pillar underneath this panel here. So, that backup battery powers the telecommunications module in the event of a 12 volt battery failure. So we need to disconnect it in order to fully reset that module. And this happens to restore connectivity. So pop out your parcel shelf. I want to fold the seat down as well. We're going to start up front with This 12 volt battery, there's four clips. I've already removed two of them. They look like this, a little different than your standard automotive clip. The, um, the pin can go up and it can go down from flat. To reinsert, you're gonna want the pin head sticking up like this. You're gonna push it in to the hole and then click the head flat. To remove, you want to push the center down so they can get focus better and then they loosen up and you can just pry it out pretty easy should just be four of those and then you can remove this panel as far as I know yep just a little bit of force Work your way around, it should come right off. There's a few clips like this inside. <clears throat> You're gonna wanna disconnect the negative battery terminal or the ground. The battery is <sighs> hard to do one-handed, but the battery is right under here. want to remove the negative terminal of the battery. The positive terminal is over here, has four odd connections for different components. The negative terminal is easily accessible here. I believe that is a 10 millimeter bolt. I don't have my socket set with me, so I'm just going to use this adjustable wrench. I'm going to need two hands. All right, once you've loosened up the nut, you 
you should be able to lift this right off the battery post. You just want to keep it disconnected. Uh, I need to find some kind of insulator that I can put in between the battery post and the sleeve to keep them from making contact. Alright, so I've created some separation there using a little plastic funnel. It's if once you loosen that nut, you just grab by this little relay or whatever that is. Probably a thermistor maybe. Um, it's easy to just try to pull the sleeve off. <clears throat> now my next order business. Now that 12 volts disconnected. <clears throat> we should no longer be able to use anything in the car. Now we need to disconnect the backup battery for the telecommunications module, which again is behind the driver's side seat pillar. So we'll start by removing this little cover for the airbag. Pop that off. There's a seven millimeter nut or screw bolt, I guess. Uh, attempt to do this with my adjustable wrench. There's not a lot of clearance in there. It's, it's inset a little bit. So this will really help if you have a socket wrench. Seven millimeters or quarter inch might do it too. So I'm gonna fuss with this and come back in a minute. All right, the bolt's out. Next step. Gotta get this trim panel off. So you can just work your way along it. It's got these standard little shark clips. I don't know what they're really called. What they look like. And the whole thing just pops, right. pops right off. Got a rear speaker back here. A few other things. And what we're after is this guy right here. So I'm gonna peel back the carpet back there. It's a little hard to access here, the carpet. It's basically just a power connector on that thing that we need to get loose. And the power connector, I believe, goes in right on the back there, on the left side. So I'm told that by wedging a screwdriver through this hole in the metal, we can detach the module from the car frame, and then it's a little bit easier to access that power plug. So let's do the next. So if you see in there, it's a little triangle shaped black piece of plastic. You basically just need to push it towards the front of the car, which is to the right, and it will fall down through that hole, allowing you to get this black shiny plastic guy out. So I'm just gonna wedge, flathead screwdriver would work. Use these scissors I've got. Just kinda Push it towards the front, and down it falls in into the cavity. So I'm gonna go retrieve that. And the last step. So now my module's hanging. This power connector. It's a little hard to see, but towards the bottom of the frame, by the orange and white wire, there's a little tab. You need to push that down or towards the orange and white wire to release the clip, and that's the power. Make sure you don't lose the whole module down in the carpet here. This is a two-handed job for sure, so I'm not gonna film it. All right, now that's out. It's right here, that, that little retention clip is. And by pushing, I use this little flathead, by pushing the clip inward towards the body of the plug, it released itself. So this is the module that powers, it's a backup battery that powers the antenna. 
gets you GPS, cellular, I believe even Bluetooth. Um, not everything on my car is out. Most of it's working. Just the cellular is not. So now we wait two or three minutes. Then we plug it back in, reattach the 12 volt, and hope that it works. All right, 12 volts reattached. Car turned back on by itself. Away. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Still have the blinking SOS. It didn't work. My cellular is still not working. Um, this is right after updating to P2.1 software, which I had done at the service center because my over the air updates weren't working after a few failed updates in the past. Um, so we're going to wait for the P2.2 update in a few weeks and hope that that does something. Or it may just start working on its own again because I've seen a lot of reports of just waiting a few days, don't drive the car, or do, and it just begins to work again. So <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly what my problem is, but if you are experiencing connectivity issues um, and you've tried all of the easy stuff like the holding the defroster button down or power cycling the display um, and none of those have worked for you, then give this a try. Um, it's not too difficult and putting it back together, you know, is half, half the time or less. So uh, good luck. Let me know if this helps.